live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Microsoft Ignite. Brought to you by Cohesity and theCUBE's ecosystem partners. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite here in Orlando. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We are joined by Sai Mukundan. He is the Director of Product Management, Cloud Solutions at Cohesity. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks, Rebecca. Thanks, too. Nice to uh, have you guys here at the Cohesity booth. And thank you Microsoft for hosting Ignite. us, I should say, yes. Yeah, absolutely, it's been wonderful. So, we, we already had your colleague, Lynn Lucas, on this morning. She was terrific, and she, she gave us a high-level vision of the, of the news. So why don't you break it down for us? Explain to our viewers exactly what Cohesity was announcing here at Ignite. Sure, so broadly speaking, uh, we announced three things uh, this morning. Um, the first one, uh, we've seen a lot of customers uh, you know, uptick Office 365. Uh, in fact, that's one of the first or initial use cases of how they adopt Microsoft's solutions more of as a service. Um, so the ability to now back up and recover O365 has come up quite a bit in our customer conversation. So we announced a solution uh, that will be available shortly. Um, so customers can leverage the same Cohesity platform that we had up until now to also back up and recover O365. So that was number one. Uh, number two was around Azure Data Box. So this is a, a relatively new offering from Azure. Uh, it was uh, pre up until now it was in preview and now it's going GA. Uh, so the fact that you know, we can now integrate with Azure Data Box as a means for customers to move data from on-premise to Azure, a, a great you know, initial seeding for long-term retention. Uh, and the fact that we integrate seamlessly with that, that was the second piece of the news. Um, and then the third one is really around the hybrid cloud uh, message on the model, right? Really, you know, hybrid, uh, I know, Stu, you like to refer to it more as a, it's an operational model. It's not, it's, it's not about, you know, what the cloud is, but it's more about an operational model. And in that model, customers are always looking to, you know, leverage it for disaster recovery purpose. Uh, and the ability to fail over to Azure and then bring it back on premise, fail back, that capability is sort of like the third um, underpinning of the announcement this morning. Yeah, and, and, and Sai, one of the challenges we have is if we look at cloud and say it's an operating model, well, the challenge we have is it really is a multi-cloud world. Uh, if you look, especially here in the Microsoft ecosystem, absolutely, start with Office 365. Microsoft pushed a lot of customers to the SaaS model. I have my data center, I might be probably modernizing things there, and then I have the public cloud. Well, when I look at my data, I want to be able to manage and interact and leverage my data no matter where it lives. So that's where, as I said, Microsoft lives in those places. Uh, it sounds like your integrations are going to help customers span and get their arms around their data and leverage their data no matter where it lives. Yeah, I particularly like the word, use of the word span because as, as you may know, we call our underlying distributed file system the SpanFS, <laughs> right? So the idea is that it spans uh, on-premise, cloud, and to your point, multi-cloud as well, right? Uh, so the ability to use the same platform uh, and that's really what drives customers today. When you look at sort of what are the three uh, aspects of our solution that they like, I would say one is the scalability, uh, the fact that they can start small and then scale as their environment grows, that's important. The second is around, everything today is around automation, API driven, API first architecture, right? And the fact that we are policy based, API driven, really, really resonates with them. And the third one is the simplicity and ease of management. I mean, you can, you can build all these solutions, but at the end of the day, it has to be simple for customers to consume. And that's something that you know, really resonates with prospects, partners, and customers we talk to. All right, so I'm wondering on, on the, uh, the Azure Data Box, if you can help unpack that a little. Uh, we, we had some Microsoft guests on, uh, Jeffrey Snover walked us through, there's a couple of different versions of them. Some are for data movement, yep. some of them there will be uh, really kind of edge compute and AI capabilities there. Which ones do Cohesity uh, use? What do you see as the use cases uh, that, that you'll be playing in? Sure, so before I go, to, go into the solution and the use case, I think the, the, one of the key aspects of why that announcement is important for us is it also shows the kind of engagement and close technology partnership that we have established with Microsoft Azure, right? Uh, the fact that we are one of their launch partners both during the preview and now in, in, in the GA time frame. And it's important for both customers and partners because that gives them uh, a good um, 
sort of uh, uh, understanding that you know we are there uh, in establishing thought leadership. We are there in working closely with um, you know um, uh, Microsoft in this case, uh, along with other technology partners out there. Just coming back to the solution itself, there are a couple of flavors of DataBox. Um, so the one that we have done extensive integration with is DataBox. Um, there's another version of it which is called the DataBox Edge, which also has compute in it. Um, but the idea here, the use case is really around, you know, when, you, when customers are looking at Cohesity, there is backup and recovery that they can do from on-premise but Azure and Azure Blob Storage in particular becomes a seamless extension for long-term retention. Now, I, there are a few customers and I can relate to several uh, who have asked, hey, I have a large enough data set that needs to be seeded initially, right? And obviously the network becomes a bottleneck in that case. So with Databox, the ability to now transfer that data into your on-prem, like you, you get the data box shipped to your on-premise, get it loaded through Cohesity, seamlessly you know, get it hydrated in your Azure account, and from that point on, we only send the changes or the incremental data. So that is really appealing to both customers as well as, uh, as, as partners who are really engaged in sort of these migration projects in, in some cases. I'm just really interested in what you were talking about with the thought leadership and, and your approach to partnerships because Microsoft selecting Cohesity as a partner, it's a real stamp of approval for Cohesity, a real validation that this company's for real. How do you then think about who you will partner with? Particularly if the company is, say, only five years old or, or pretty new to the space or, or maybe not as well known. Yeah, I think one of the things that um, uh, Mohit, you know, our, uh, the, uh, Aaron, and he's a pioneer in uh, distributed systems and is the founder of Cohesity. Uh, one of the things that he established right from the get-go is uh, the ability for the product to scale, scale on-premise, but also that the cloud has to be, you know, very seamless. It's a natural extension of what the architecture is, is, uh, you know, in, intended to do uh, or achieve. Um, and so that kind of made it easier uh, for, for us on the product team to figure out who, who is it that we need to uh, partner with. And um, you know, Azure is obviously a, a, a leader in that space, uh, over the, particularly over the last uh, a few years. And I want to go back to something that was mentioned in the keynote yesterday. It's not, it's not a know it all, but it's a learn it all, right? And, the learning that we have had as we have grown Cohesity and uh, the, the product has grown and uh, as we acquire customers and talk to prospects is they want to work uh, with the likes of you know, Microsoft Azure, leverage the, the infrastructure that they have to offer. So we started there and we said, if customers are asking for it, we, we do it and we learn along with them on why, why and what the use cases are. And it started with, going back to my earlier comment, long-term retention. And now, as an extension to that with uh, you know, the hybrid cloud where not only storage, but leveraging disks, leveraging Azure Compute, that's now become an extension of what we started off with. And so we have Azure um, Data Platform Cloud Edition, which is Cohesity running on Azure. So I would say how we made the decision in this case, um, A, the product and the foundation really set, set that for us, but B, more importantly, the customers really asking for it and asking for that integration made it easier for us to determine that, hey, we absolutely need to partner with the cloud vendors. Sai, yeah. I'd li like to build off of that. The customers and what they're asking for. This is a very large ecosystem here. Uh, to be honest, uh, the, we know that Azure, uh, Microsoft is a, a big player in cloud. When I look at the show, Azure's a piece of the overall discussion. So, I was a little surprised, not that we're hearing more about Azure here, but it's because if you look at just order magnitude, how many customers Microsoft has on Windows <laughs> and Office, uh, obviously that's going to dwarf uh, you know, customer adoption in general. Where are your customers when they talk about cloud adoption? Uh, y y y your customers, do you find them more you know, Windows customers in their own data center versus Azure? Uh, you know, what are your customers doing in, in adoption of Cohesity Cloud products in general? Sure, so if you look at the typical on-ramp of customers, uh, more often than not, um, at least I would say over the last couple of years, our customers have typically started with uh, the on-premise because their immediate pain point, while the platform can do a lot of things, customers are always looking to also solve their immediate pain point while looking into the future, right? So their immediate pain point was really around 
how do I make my uh, backup and data protection uh, systems uh, first of all, simple, efficient, and uh, you know less fragmentation. And while I'm doing that, how can I then potentially invest in a platform that is capable of doing more? And that's something that Cohesity offered in the on-premise world. And as a natural extension to that, as both from the bottoms up, as you know, storage admins and backup admins started looking at leveraging uh, cloud or Azure in particular for. Uh, as an extension of their storage infrastructure, as well as from the top down, you know, more of like the business decision makers and the CIOs driving that mandate of, hey, I want you to think about cloud first uh, and have that mindset. I think it really appealed to them because now they could start leveraging Azure blobs, uh, again, back to that long-term retention, legal hold, compliance standpoint, and then building off of that building off of that to do test dev. We have a, a great feature, it's called uh, Cloud Spin, the ability to take some of the on-premise infrastructure, and to your earlier questions too, it's, we have seen customers both VMware, um, Windows, Hyper-V environments, uh, and believe it or not, some customers still have physical systems. And the, the fact that Cohesity can take care of all that in the on-prem world, while seamlessly you know, helping them adopt um, cloud, is really the kind of customers that we have seen in this uh, journey that we have taken along with our customers and partners. Well, this is theCUBE's first time at Ignite. I know you're relatively new I'm to really Ignite. I'm really surprised about that. <laughs> I, would, I would think you guys would have made a, a, a number of appearances, but I'm glad you it's think. the first time and it's at Co the Cohesity booth, so wonderful. So we're so excited, but what are, what are some of the things you're going to take back with you from this conference? I think I think for me, uh, this this conference as well as any other such conference in particular, it's it's really the excitement, right? The the, the you go back and uh, you reflect on the last like three four days you spend here, and it's about all the great conversations that we have had with with customers, prospects, and partners. Secondly, um, we had we, we had a, a session earlier this morning, a Cohesity session. Um, we had uh, Brown University join us, and then. Uh, there's going to be another one tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have um, UPenn and uh, HKS. We are working on your alma mater, uh, Cornell, by the way, too. So Excellent. we'll get that. <laughs> yeah, uh, and um, so the fact that you know we had we have all these sessions and some really great attendance uh, and uh, attendance from um, folks who are you know yet to embrace the Cohesity um, solution. So it's great for us to get our message out Getting there. Getting the word out. out. Get out. Get our word out there. And I would say uh, the last thing for us is also showcasing uh, to Microsoft here in particular, you know, the, the fact you know that we have this big presence here and and the excitement it's um, it's um, having is is a great message to the Microsoft executives and the and the leadership team that we work with as well to sort sort of you know show that show more love. We already have enough uh, that we get attention from them, but this is more of a validation for them to say there's more that we should be doing and could be doing with Cohesity. So I think those are probably the three things I'll walk away with and uh, build on what we learn from Ignite here. Excellent, well thank you so much Sai for coming on the show, it was great having you here. Thanks, likewise. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman, we will have more of theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite in just a little bit.